Well, the bottle is, it's a mystery. It contains a mystery. And the thing about Watch It is when I was thinking about the essence of Watch It, I was thinking about all the conversations that I've ever had in Watch It and how somehow you meet somebody else in Watch It and you hear the same conversation coming back to you. So what I was quite interested in was, was working on the project, taking something where I could capture that mystery uh, of something where people would then start to talk about the mystery. So the bottle is really a kind of, it's like an analog interactive piece. So in the bottle, there are all sorts of clues and there is a story uh, that goes along with those clues, which you could, you could look at and follow. But there are also things in there where some of the evidence in the bottle, because it's like a forensic evidence bottle, it's got lots of bits and pieces of, I suppose, objects that have a particular significance that make up the narrative of what actually happened. Or maybe they don't make up the narrative of what actually happened because we're not quite sure as to whether certain things happened in a particular way or not. And maybe some people in Watch It may be able to add to the story themselves because they might have some connection with the history and also have some connection with the, the sort of objects that are in there. For example, there's some pieces of alabaster that were found under the undercliff that had been stuck in the in the side of the the boat that was wrecked there's rose pike and there's jack henderson and this incident occurred in 1923 it's a long time ago and what happened was they were in debt they had a bit of a story about themselves or characters about them but people in watch it were not quite sure about what their relationship was but it was known that Jack was a, he was a serial gambler and he'd actually uh, won the boat that got wrecked at the undercliff in um, Blue Anchor. And, and so there was this connection when they found the boat which had been wrecked, but in the bottom of the boat, they found all these uh, clues, these, these, these things that pointed to foul play. And then various people came forward. At, at first, the uh, the shopkeepers and thing and the, and the people who had been left with um, bad debts from the two of them didn't come forward because they were a bit embarrassed about what had happened. But gradually, um, people came forward. There was one chap who was very concerned because he he had some ill blood with Henderson, uh, and he'd seen him down in Barnstaple. And Henderson was uh, playing dominoes at the time, and uh, he was bragging about what what uh, he he'd, he'd sort of been sort of procuring money from his uh, his his partner Rose by foul means was thought. The person who was responsible for following the case, because they then started to look into it, Sergeant Chelmsford, got on to the people down in uh, Barnstable and tried to see whether he could um, uh, capture uh, Henderson, but Henderson had apparently long gone. They were supposedly, he was, he was a fiancé. Why were they living together? Back in those times, that would have been seen to be rather, you know, not quite right. And, you know, what was the role of the landlady in allowing this to happen, these two people to be living in sin? Were they indeed actually married? Because in the bottle itself, there's some jewellery that belonged to Rose Pike. Uh, and one is clearly a wedding ring, and the other is clearly an engagement ring. So maybe they were married. But uh, it, does, it does remain a bit of a mystery. The one thing that was quite interesting was that from the statements that were gathered, it was clear that Rose actually was a person of means. But obviously, the chap that she was with was a person of not so many means, or maybe he was, but he was gambling it all away, despite the fact he won himself a boat in the process of it. Looking at weather patterns of the time and the, the Atlantic squalls that were going on and how the boat was wrecked, because initially it was thought that the boat had just been wrecked. Nobody put anything, uh, any suspicion on it. It was just another wrecked boat in the area. Uh, but once they started investigating, they found these various things, which also pointed towards um, 
further foul play as it were. They found other bits of the boat which are actually in the bottle. So all that remains is the story and the various bits and pieces, the, uh, the, the items that, that point towards the story itself. So it's a bit, it's a bit like... Um, it's a bit like an illustration in a bottle. All the objects in the bottle have something to do with the overall story, but they add an extra bit of interest and mystery to it because some of the objects, obviously from that time, make you question what, what it must have been like. You know, the, the photography, the, the way that they sort of uh, gathered some of the materials, like the dominoes. There's some dominoes in, in, in the bottle, which are, they're both, they're a six and a one if I remember rightly, but they're two dominoes and they're exactly identical. So he was obviously using these in, in, in his domino playing. But the bottle itself, uh, the construction, uh, what I wanted to do was in gathering all these items together, I wanted to present them as if they were in a, in a museum. So you'd be able to follow the story and look at the items and be able to see them. So the actual construction was quite complex and one of the things that I was quite keen on doing was making it more complex than it actually needed to be so for example there are various shells that go into the jar the bottle but what I did was I made some of them oversize so when you actually look at the bottle and you look at the shells it poses the question how on earth did they get in there and there are some pieces which are full scale that will never get through the neck of the bottle. So I tried to create some mystery in terms of the actual construction itself. So the whole thing is, there's a story, but there's also the story about how the bottle was made. 